Well, these parts just keep getting longer and longer, huh? Last time we did tier 2, which was a whopping 158 entries, but today we've got even more somehow. This time we have 200 entries for tier 3, which will put us not even halfway through this iceberg. Great. So yeah, if it's your first time in this series, welcome. This is part 3 of an ongoing Lost Media Iceberg with 1000 entries. These are the first two parts if you want to catch up on those before this one, but as for the rest of you, you know the drill by now. So let's jump back into the deepest Lost Media Iceberg. Agent This is referencing a game that was announced to be in development by Rockstar Games in 2007, that being the PS3 exclusive Agent, which was set during the Cold War. However, the game was presumably cancelled and never finished, as there hasn't been any official word on the project in years, and Rockstar has even since removed it from their official website. Although there have been a few leaks containing screenshots as well as concept art from the game. And Justice for Gore, a gore and noise tribute to Metallica. So this is a pretty obscure Lost Gore Grind and Noise Core tribute album comprised of Metallica cover songs by various Italian and Spanish artists and groups, and while there are some of the songs available online, the full album remains lost, despite it being purchasable at some point. Apathy, Sacks of People Sacks of People is a partially lost album from the group Apathy that was released in 2001, and was sold in a few music stores in Rochester. However, the album was pretty obscure and didn't sell very well. But this band is notable because the band's guitarist, Luke Helder, would go on to become the Midwest Pipe Bomber in 2002, as Helder planted several pipe bombs in mailboxes across America, before he was eventually arrested. Only after this incident did the band's album come to the spotlight, and many people attempted to acquire it. But as of now, only two of the album's 12 songs have been recovered. Incel Project Oh boy, so this was a documentary series created for Blip TV sometime in the early 2010s and late 2000s. With the official website for the doc being involuntarycelibacy.com, However, it seems this series was never finished, and only work in progress pieces of it were ever released on Blip TV, most of which just consisted of interviews. However, it is possible that there may have been a final cut that was released, but most of the footage from this doc is long lost. Only a few segments from the first two episodes and interviews are available as of now. Super Mario 64 Secret Star so this is a surprisingly pretty deep mystery and rabbit hole, all related to a simple Mario 64 screamer video, which launched an entire Lost Media Wiki search and everything, and this case has quite a few twists and turns, and a YouTuber named Marvel made a really good two-part series documenting the entire search for this thing if you're interested in the whole story. But basically, a bunch of Lost Media Wiki users came together in search of a Lost Screamer video titled Super Mario 64 Big Star Secret or something similar, where it showed how to activate the Big Star Secret or Secret Star before cutting to a Screamer. And despite contacting and finding the original uploader, the video itself is lost, and the only footage of it can be found in a low quality reaction video of it from 2008. Telechat English Dub So here's something I had never heard of before. Telechat. Probably not how you pronounce the name. But it's actually a French-Belgian production, and an 80s puppet program that ran for 134 episodes, each being 5 minutes long, as a sort of news show parody hosted by animals. Now, the show was of course originally not recorded in English, but it was dubbed at some point, at least the first season, as it was said to have aired on children's TV in the 1990s in the UK. But other than that, not much else is known about it, and I couldn't find much else on this lost dub. L Supersonic Q Lost Videos some more lost media from another lost media YouTuber, one of the biggest in fact, LSSQ. And if you're watching this iceberg, you probably watch his videos or have at least heard of him. He's been making lost media content for a very long time, 
and he's been uploading videos even before that, so it makes sense that there would be some lost content. And what's really cool is he even made an entire video that's an hour and a half long, dedicated to his old, rare, unreleased, and lost videos. So if you're looking for lost media from his channel, this video would basically be your one-stop shop. Doom Gameplay QuakeCon 2014 so at QuakeCon 2014, id Software showed off gameplay for their new upcoming title, simply called Doom. However, recording of any kind at this event was prohibited, so none of the gameplay here was captured, and all we have to go by is the word of mouth of those actually at this event which is detailed in an IGN breakdown from that same year. Now, I'm no Doom expert or anything, so there may be some small differences you could pick out, but to me it just sounds very similar to what we got in 2016 with the Doom reboot, so I'm not sure we're missing out on too much here. Although there could possibly be some lost content in that 20 minute demo we never saw. Gogola this is a lost Bollywood film from the 60s that was heavily inspired by Godzilla from 1954. However, no copies of the film are known to exist at this point, and there isn't even any footage of it to speak of. All we have are a few screenshots, a poster, and the film's soundtrack, as well as a rough plot synopsis, with the movie being about the monster in the film terrorizing a city, while the government places a bounty on said creature, which then a scientist and daughter take on in order to pay off their debts. But not much else is known on this film. Baby Shaker. Okay, prepare for possibly the weirdest app you've ever heard of. I know, there are a lot of contenders out there, but this should be at least in that list discussion. Anyway, this is a very controversial and eventually banned game found on the App Store for 99 cents back in 2009. As for the gameplay, well, it's pretty self explanatory, right? People were outraged at this game, and eventually it was removed from the store due to the controversy. And since then, the game has become lost media, with there only being footage of the gameplay as well as screenshots available online. Metallica The Game Created by Black Label Games, this cancelled driving and shooter title was being developed for the PS2, Xbox, and PC, and was going to feature the rock band Metallica, hence the name of the game, which was also at one point called Damage Inc. However, the game was meant to launch in or around 2005, but after years of no word on the production side of things, Metallica vocalist James Hetfield confirmed the game's cancellation. So all we have now is some beta gameplay footage, as well as a trailer, but no builds of the game have been found. Waluigi Toenail Clipping Party Excuse me, what? Yes, apparently there was a Flash game actually developed officially by Nintendo in 2000 called Waluigi's Toenail Clipping Party, also sometimes called Waluigi's Footfall. The game was featured in an issue of Nintendo Power, and described the gameplay as having the player clip Waluigi's toenails and then catch them in a jar to win points. Yeah, very strange. And as of now, the game remains lost, despite it being apparently available on the promotional website Waluigi.com at some point, at least according to the Nintendo Power article. Fun Day Pop Pet Show 9-11 Episode The Fun Day Pop Pet Show is a very long-running puppet show that has been going on since 1999, with over 800 episodes airing as of making this video. However, there is one really interesting episode that is lost, that being the special that was recorded on the night of September 11th, 2001, which addressed the tragedy that took place on that date. And despite it being remembered by many, it was never archived, and no footage from that exact episode has been located. The Moxie Show This is a partially lost show from Cartoon Network called The Moxie Show, or The Moxie and Flea Show, which began airing in 1993 and ended in 2000. The show consisted of various old and classic cartoons from the 90s, which also included CGI segments from the character of Moxie as well as his pet Flea, but it was not a very big hit. So after it initially aired, reruns of the segments were scarce, and most of the show became lost, and only some footage as well as the pilot episode have been found. 
which is pretty ironic considering it's usually the other way around, with the pilot being lost and the show actually being available. Weaponless Self-Defense So here we have a pretty interesting and very old TV program series from the BBC TV service, which aired from 1936 to 37, and was a very early educational program featuring the martial art of jujitsu which was hosted by professional wrestler Bob Gregory. But yeah, unfortunately, like a lot of other early TV broadcasts, it's likely gone for good, as there wasn't any good way of preserving broadcasts like this back in the day. Although some of Bob Gregory's judo self-defense training was recorded from back in 1937, and can still be viewed today, so maybe the weaponless self-defense broadcast is out there somewhere. Yasuko Endo in the Distance So this is a lost and unreleased track from a Japanese model and actress named Yasuko Endo, with her first song being scheduled for release in May of 1986, under the name In the Distance. However, on March 29th of 1986, Endo took her own life, and the release of the song was subsequently cancelled, and any copies were destroyed or hidden away. And the song remains lost today although a cover of the song was created by Tetsuo Sakurai. Dead or Alive Fan the Flame Part 2 So this was a planned album from the band Dead or Alive, and was going to actually be a continuation of the previous album, Fan the Flame Part 1. And it's thought this second part would release the following year in 1991, before that date was eventually moved up, and eventually it was just never released at all. But in 2021, it was announced that the album would finally release in October, which it actually did, making this no longer lost media. Nirvana Sings Nirvana So I had no idea about this beforehand, so shout out once again to Equal Rep, the creator of this iceberg, for shining light on this for me. So basically before the Nirvana everyone knows today, there was a different group called Nirvana from the UK, and just to add to the confusion, the UK Nirvana planned to do an album covering the songs from the US Nirvana, however the album was cancelled soon after the death of Kurt Cobain, and since then only one song from the album has been found, that being their cover of the song Lithium. Lord Byron's Memoirs so this refers to the collection of writings done by the British poet George Gordon Byron from between 1818 and 1821, which were actually destroyed after his death, meaning we don't really know exactly what was contained within them, but we can speculate, as Byron wrote poetry and stories for most of his life, and would also write memoirs about his experiences and thoughts on things going on in his life and around the world, and it was planned for the manuscripts to be published after his death. However, another poet named Thomas More and a publisher called John Murray, who owned the rights to the works for whatever reason, destroyed the manuscripts. Which has led to a lot of speculation into the life and possible scandals of Lord Byron. Krina Grisbo TV. Poradnik Us- yeah, I don't- I don't even know what I'm saying. Okay, so according to a Polish wiki on this very strange and cryptic YouTube channel, it lists an episode for the series called Smile Guide, that being the third episode which was never actually released despite it being announced with a trailer way back in 2014. And on this wiki page it says that the episode was never released due to a hard drive failure. But it even keeps going after this with an episode 4 and 5, but no 3 even though there is a fan-made version, and they are still indeed making content on this channel, and uh, yeah, it's definitely as weird as ever. Recreo Online This was the website of a monthly magazine of the same name that ran from 1969 to 1981, before it eventually returned in 2000. The website featured not only parts of the magazine, but also toys, animated episodes, and even games. However, most of these old features are lost due to the website being changed, with only a couple of the animations being found. Hi oh honey, I'm home. Quite the odd title, right? Well, believe it or not, but this British sitcom series from the 90s starred Adolf Hitler and his wife Ava Braun as the main characters. 
living the life of typical sitcom characters. Yes, this is actually real. And to no one's surprise, the show garnered very negative reception and was quickly cancelled after only the first episode aired. It seems there may have been somewhere between 11 to 25 or maybe even more planned episodes, although only 8 were ever filmed for the show. And as of now, only the pilot episode is available in full, while some clips can be found from some of the unaired episodes. My Little Pony Rainbow Factory so I'm pretty sure this here is referring to an animated adaptation of a My Little Pony fanfiction and creepypasta called Rainbow Factory that was being unofficially produced by a small animation studio. However, because of this, the creators received a cease and desist from Hasbro, meaning they had to cancel the project in May of 2017. And all there is now from the film is a small teaser released on the YouTube channel of the studio, which has since been privated but does have re-uploads. AVGN Roger Rabbit Rant One of the most iconic episodes of the classic YouTube series The Angry Video Game Nerd is the review of the Who Framed Roger Rabbit NES game. However, according to a friend of James Rolfe, the original version had an entire scene that was cut in which the nerd would rant about the game's features, which, I mean, it's pretty standard stuff, but it never made it to the final draft. And according to Rolfe, the footage is now lost for good. The Weekend Upbeat 2017 so according to a Genius.com article, the music artist The Weeknd scrapped an entire album in 2017 that was much more upbeat, but instead he chose to release the EP My Dear Melancholy, which was basically the opposite in terms of emotion. He then went on to state that he didn't release the other album because he didn't want to perform something that he didn't feel. So the album remains unreleased to this day. Although, maybe in the future, some or all of the songs could eventually be released. Tapeworm Demos Tapeworm was a band and a sort of side project featuring a ton of different and well-known artists in the rock scene, such as James Maynard Keenan of Tool and A Perfect Circle, as well as Phil Anselmo from Pantera, and quite a few others. However, the work of these artists went unreleased for years, and actually only two of the songs from this album were revealed. One called Vacant, performed live by A Perfect Circle, and the song Potions, which was recorded by Keenan. But the rest of the songs have yet to be played or be released in any fashion. Daft Punk Winter Olympics Commercial Okay, so we've actually got some found media here. This being a commercial recorded for the 2002 Winter Olympics featuring the music duo Daft Punk. And on November 13th, 2022, a Reddit user called Daft Punks uploaded the commercial in its entirety to the Daft Punk subreddit. 1967 Rebel 400 The Rebel 400 was a race in the 1967 NASCAR Grand National Series, which happened on May 13th of that year. This was the 17th race of that event, and would end with Richard Petty winning, breaking the record for the most Grand National wins. However, the race itself is only partially available, only about 5.5 minutes actually, making the rest of the footage lost to this day. Vrillin TV Hijack this is also more well known as the Southern Television Hijacking, which is one of the most infamous as well as one of the earliest occurrences of TV hijacking, which occurred on November 26, 1977. However, unlike something like the Max Hedrum incident, where the mystery comes from why and how the hijacking occurred, with this we're really just wondering what happened at all, because any of this footage from the incident is lost. And all we really have to go on is the audio from the incident, as well as reports from those who have claimed to witness it. The audio is kind of hard to make out, but basically the voice states something like, This is the voice of Vrillin, a representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command. And goes on to talk about a bunch of crazy sci-fi for like 6 minutes. Talking about the new age and spiritual evolution, it's pretty wild. Honestly, I think I'll save a deep dive of this for a separate video, because this case is really interesting and definitely deserves more attention. 
RMS Titanic footage. So everyone knows about the Titanic and the tragedy that occurred with it all the way back in 1912. And yeah, it's a little bit ironic that it appeared on an iceberg chart here, but getting back on track, is there really any footage of it? I mean, this is something that happened literally over a hundred years ago, right? There's plenty of pictures, sure, but footage is definitely hard to come by. Even James Cameron, the director of the 1997 film Titanic, actually went looking for this lost footage, only to find out that the clip he was actually searching for wasn't actually the Titanic at all, but a different similar ship. Although there is said to be some more lost footage of the Titanic that was recorded but is lost today. All we have is a small clip recorded of the ship being docked in Belfast prior to its departure. Seaman PC version. So there's this really weird Dreamcast pet game, I guess you could call it, that exists where you care for this creature. And it was actually planned to get a Windows PC port, which would have been exclusive to Japan. However, it went unreleased for whatever reason, and there's been no real word about the project since it was revealed. Big Bug Man. Here's a movie I've talked about a few times, and if you're into lost media, you've probably heard about. Big Bug Man, an unreleased animated film that starred Marlon Brando in his last performance before his passing, where he played the role of an elderly woman, as he always wanted to play that kind of a role in his career. The film was initially scheduled for release in 2006, but was delayed multiple times, until it was just never released at all and only storyboards and news clips exist that show anything on the movie itself. PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale DLCs So here's another one of those Arena Fighter Smash Bros like games, but to its credit this is definitely one of the earlier ones. PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, which released in 2012 for the PS3 and Vita. However, there is cancelled DLC from the game that was never released from 2013. Two characters were found to be included in the DLC, that being Dart Feld from The Legend of Dragoon, as well as Abe from Odd World. Sadness. So here we have a rather interesting cancelled game developed for the Wii called Sadness, a survival horror set in Ukraine. However, the game was eventually cancelled by its developer Nibris without any gameplay, screenshots, trailers, or any real reveal of any kind. And yeah, no builds or any real evidence of its existence at all can be found. MTV Video Mods This was a very short-lived series from MTV that only lasted for 6 episodes, with the show being about video game music videos. You had Star Wars, Silent Hill, Medal of Honor, Sims, SWAT 4, you get the idea. But probably the most infamous one was the Spongebob one, which was lost for quite some time, but eventually was found and uploaded to YouTube. And in fact, as of now, all of the known episodes have been discovered, making this series actually found media. Paparazzi Stuntman by Stevo. So this is a series or film or something that was being made by Stevo from Jackass called Paparazzi Stuntman, which actually had a trailer released for it, although it never actually came out. What actually happens in it, I'm sure you can guess. The typical Stevo antics of him getting up to some crazy sh** as usual. But like I said, it was never released, and it's unknown how much of it was actually recorded. Regardless, only trailer footage and some clips are available. Jackass number 2 Deleted Scenes Speaking of Jackass, there were quite a few scenes that were cut from Jackass 2, some of which are lost. One of the known scenes is one featured in the trailer but not in the film, of Don Vito getting his tooth pulled with a string tied to a Lamborghini. There was also another strange scene in which the guys would get into a bathtub and try to ignite their farts. Yes, that did happen. However, the footage could only be found on the Jackass website, which has since been taken down, making this scene lost as well. Hokuto no Ken Uncensored 
Fist of the North Star, also known as Hakuto no Ken, is an anime adaptation of a manga which ran in the 80s for over 150 episodes, and those who have seen the show know that it is particularly violent. But the movie adaptation made by Toei in 1986 really took it to a new level, and tried to replicate the style of the manga. However, after the initial release of the film, it had to be heavily censored due to complaints about the violence, making home media releases have a censored edition. However, some of the original scenes from the uncensored cut have been found, but the full version remains lost. Cicero's Hortensius this refers to a dialogue written by a Roman philosopher called Marcus Tullius Cicero, which actually became a very popular work for the time that it was written. However, in the modern day, there is not a complete version that's been found, as it's theorized that it only survived in its entirety until the 6th century, so only fragments of the work remain today. Squidward Fan 1982 so according to a reddit post I found on a different lost media iceberg that also has this entry, this refers to a YouTuber called SquidwardFan1982, whose content was lost after their channel was terminated, as the channel's creator had ended their own existence in 2010. Bob the Builder Malay Dub So most people know about Bob the Builder, even if you didn't watch it as a kid. I mean, I didn't, but I've definitely heard of it. Anyway, it's no surprise that the show has been dubbed in many languages due to its popularity. But one of these lost dubs is the Malaysian one, which only has a theme song of it which has been found. Cruel Summer This is a short film that was shown only one time at a film festival and has not been seen since 2012, that being the film Cruel Summer which was a piece that accompanied the album of the same name created by Kanye West. The film is unique and notable because it actually was shown off using seven different screens to portray the picture, and starred Kid Cudi as a car thief trying to impress the father of a blind Arabian princess. And while there is footage of the screening on YouTube, the full film has yet to be located. The Billion Brick Race this was a planned third film in the LEGO Movie franchise, and was planned for a release in May of 2019. However, most likely due to the poor box office results of the LEGO Movie 2, as well as the LEGO Ninjago Movie, this third film ended up being cancelled, with Warner Bros. ending their deal with LEGO in December of 2019. Disney's Princess Academy once again, we've got another cancelled film, a short animated film by Disney, actually with not much known about it at all, except the title as well as some concept art which has surfaced. And production began in 2009, and was actually going to be a hand-drawn 2D animation. However, sadly in 2013, Disney got rid of most of their 2D animators, essentially abandoning this project. And while the short is most likely unfinished, there is thought to be much more in terms of lost concept art and storyboards that have yet to surface. Castlevania game featuring Mario on the Famicom. So this one is relatively simple. It's a modded version of Castlevania for the Famicom, except this time Mario is the playable character, at least according to this blog written about the game. All we really have, as far as I'm aware, are these screenshots, but yeah, it's basically just a swapped sprite, so I'm sure someone could make this pretty easily nowadays. I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream Original Version I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream is a PC game adaptation of the short story written by Harlan Ellison that focuses on a post-apocalyptic future in which an AI keeps alive the last five humans on Earth and tortures them in various ways. And despite this game already being extremely disturbing as is, apparently there were a lot of cut scenes, and possibly an uncensored and uncut version that has yet to be found. And to be honest, a lot of these cut scenes are just too much to mention here on YouTube, but some of these deleted scenes were actually shown on a 1995 episode of the British TV show Games Master. Luigi Kid The Outbreak Alright, so back at it again with YouTuber Lost Media. 
This time a game created for the channel Luigi Kid Gaming, who focuses on creepypasta and .exe games, which this game kind of follows the same style of. He actually played it on his YouTube channel as well in June of 2020, where we can see actual gameplay of it, and in the description of the video there is a Game Jolt link to download the game. Unfortunately, this link is dead, meaning the game for now is lost. Unwritten Legends This is a text-based multi-user dungeon fantasy game set in London that was said to promote role-playing among players, but it seems the domain for the site no longer works, meaning the game is lost for the time being, and possibly forever. MC Hammer and Tupac Too Tight so MC Hammer, upon joining Tupac with signing on to Death Row Records, was actually planning to have an album called Too Tight, which Tupac wrote a lot of material for. And the album was eventually recovered, and has since been posted to YouTube, despite it never officially releasing. Skrillex Voltage This is a cancelled and unreleased album once again, this time from the artist Skrillex, who intended to release this in 2012. However, apparently the music wasn't backed up and was only stored on one hard drive, which was stolen. However, most of the songs that were featured on the album did later release or were leaked online. But there likely are songs that have not yet surfaced. Celebrity Number 6 Original Photo so this is a really strange and interesting ongoing mystery originating from Reddit, as all good mysteries do. Basically a user in 2020 made a post about some curtains they had bought, which had 8 different pop art illustrations of known celebrities, as they were all based on specific images of said celebrity, and all of them were solved. Well, except for one. Celebrity number 6. Some believe this could be Kate Hudson, Johnny Depp, Kristen Bell, Brad Pitt, Hilary Duff, Angelina Jolie, you get the idea. It could literally be almost anyone. We don't even really know if it's a man or a woman, so for now, this is still an ongoing mystery. Smile Dog Unedited Photo Shout out to Jorge here, because Creepypasta Media is just so interesting. And I mean, we already talked about the Jeff the Killer original image, and now we got the same thing here, but with Smile Dog. However, it seems that we might actually have the original unedited image. This, right here. Mystery solved, right? Well, we're not so sure. See, the background on this image is completely different, right? However, the dog kind of matches up, but that's only part of it, I guess. And remember, this is only one of the two iconic Smile Dog images. So yeah, with this one, the rabbit hole could definitely go much deeper. Loch Ness Investigation Bureau Films Back in 1962, there was a group formed called the Loch Ness Phenomena Investigation Bureau, which was made to study the Loch Ness Monster Reports, and identify the origins of these claims. And before their disbanding in 1972, the group carefully studied the area and the waters surrounding it, with volunteers watching and even recording. However, apparently those films are now lost today, so who really knows what they could have captured. Nirvana Halloween 1993 footage I believe this refers to a concert on Halloween of 1993 in Akron, Ohio, where the band Nirvana was performing while wearing Barney-themed costumes? Yeah, and that's not it. There's a bunch of other crazy stories from this event, such as a guy throwing a shoe at Kurt Cobain, which he then pissed into? I don't know, these stories are from Reddit, but still, there is not any footage of this event that I could find. Only some images. Joker Deleted Scenes The director of the 2019 film Joker, Todd Phillips, once stated in an interview very bluntly that he hated director's cuts, and that scenes that are deleted are cut for a reason, insinuating that none from this film would ever be released, despite there being some teasing about some of these lost scenes. Joaquin Phoenix even joked that there were not even just deleted scenes, but deleted acts from the film. And of course, can't forget the infamous yet vague bathtub scene that has been referenced quite a bit, which was supposedly cut for just being too much. Todd Phillips recalled the scene, saying, quote, 
There were two or three other impromptu scenes we shot. One that is amazing in a bathtub, but I don't think we can actually include it in an R-rated movie. And it's not because it was pornographic, it was just insane. The Phantom of the Opera Different Lost Versions there are a few lost versions of The Phantom of the Opera, one of them being the first ever adaptation of the novel in the 1916 silent film of the same name, which isn't too surprising considering how many silent films from this era are lost today. Also, for a while, a couple of added scenes were lost from a 1962 TV movie adaptation, which have been found as of 2020. But there is also the 1925 silent film version, which had a lot of edits made to it, causing quite a few scenes to become lost. George Melius Filmography George Melius is a very famous filmmaker, being that he is known as the first magician of cinema, and that he created many films over his career, over 500 even, most of which are now lost today. And the Lost Media Wiki has a chart with his filmography, giving the titles of each both in French and English as well as if it's still lost today, or actually available. Death Note Toonami Promo This is a fan-made YouTube video described in a video called Pieces of YouTube Lost Media that I remember watching by LSSQ. And apparently it's just a fan-made version of a Toonami intro featuring Death Note, even though it never aired on the block. There is this video I found that's titled as a Toonami promo for Death Note, but in reality this is just an Adult Swim promo of the show and is different from the video LSSQ describes. But actually after watching this, I got recommended this other one, which actually is a lot closer to the one LSSQ describes, so maybe this is it? I don't really know. Paranormal Lana Videos Another YouTuber here. Paranormal Lana, also known as Alana G, who created content based around horror. Things like true scary stories, looking into unsolved mysteries, and diving into true crime as well as other topics. However, in September of 2015, her channel was suddenly deleted, with her disappearing from the site entirely, which did make a lot of people worry, and some content creators including Scare Theater made videos on her sudden disappearance, as it possibly related to her having a stalker. As for her YouTube videos, while not all of them are available, a good chunk of them have been re-uploaded and can be watched on YouTube. Call of Duty Vietnam this is a lost and cancelled installment of the Call of Duty series that was being developed by Sledgehammer Games and was obviously focused on the Vietnam War as its main setting. Most interestingly, the game was actually planned to be a third person shooter rather than first person, and quite a bit of development was put into this title, about 8 months in fact, with there being about 15 minutes of gameplay that was playable at some point. However, Sledgehammer went on to assist Infinity Ward in developing MW3, and later would develop Advanced Warfare as their first Call of Duty, leaving COD Vietnam essentially cancelled. And no footage of gameplay has surfaced as of now, only a few pieces of concept art. Left 4 Dead 2 Cabin in the Woods DLC here we have some lost and cancelled DLC from Valve's zombie co-op shooter Left 4 Dead 2. And it wasn't just any DLC, it was actually a new campaign that was in collaboration with the 2012 horror film Cabin in the Woods. However, there was a lot of drama and delays on the movie side of things, which ultimately led to the cancellation of this DLC tie-in. And there isn't really any material from this that's been found, only word from the developers that worked on it. Sonic Jr. This is a kind of obscure and unconfirmed title in the Sonic series that was allegedly in development by Sega called Sonic Jr., which featured a younger version of Sonic as the name suggests and was meant to be similar to Echo Jr. There's pretty much no other info on this title though, and if it was in development at some point, it was cancelled, likely due to the poor performance of Echo Jr. Communicore Footage and Material Communicore was an attraction at the Epcot Center and was created in 1982, featuring early computer programs and videos. Here's a list of those that were known to be available from the Lost Media Wiki. 
but unfortunately it closed in 1994, and basically all of its original digital material has become lost. All there really is are some images of the known programs and attractions. Amazing World of Gumball, The Rex. Here we have an unreleased and partially lost episode of The Amazing World of Gumball from 2012. That was leaked via a list of the complete episodes of the second season. And that episode is called The Rex. And for a while, not much at all was known about this mysterious episode. All we really have now is just some storyboards from this cancelled episode. Computing News this is one of the very early computer-related newsletters and magazines, with its first issue of it releasing way back in the 50s, which is pretty insane to think about. It ran for 217 issues, as far as we know, and ended on March 15th, 1962. And unfortunately, a lot of the issues that were released have become lost media. And in fact, only two of the 217 issues have been found, those being the last two, with the rest of them now being lost. Actually Happened Videos This is a rather infamous YouTube channel that would post some pretty crazy and often meme-worthy stories told through animation, with the channel actually getting over a million subscribers doing this. A lot of people made commentaries and reviews on some of these videos because of just how wild and fake the stories seemed, but in June of 2020, all of the videos were privated, making a lot of them lost now, with only some re-uploads being available. Alex Jones Videos So Alex Jones is definitely one of the most controversial figures on the internet. I think that's pretty fair to say, with all of the crazy stuff he's said and done over the years. It makes sense that there be some lost content, whether it be stuff that was taken down for whatever reason, or videos he personally removed, most likely related to conspiracies or hoaxes that could or have already gotten him in trouble for defamation and things like that. I don't really have any specific examples here, but I'm sure there are some. Especially ones related to a certain incident. Bro explaining original source. Ah yes, the lost origin of memes. Honestly sounds like a good topic for a video if there's even enough of them. But anyway, this is talking about this meme here, called bro explaining for obvious reasons. But according to Know Your Meme, we actually do know the origin now. That being that this image was taken during a baseball game between the Houston Astros and the St. Louis Cardinals, which took place on June 7th, 2011. This was originally featured, it seems, on Fox Sports Midwest, before it made its way to a sports blog and eventually into a meme collection. And from there, well, I guess the rest is history. Earl Sweatshirt and the Alchemist YouTube Album This is a lost YouTube album created by Earl Sweatshirt and produced by The Alchemist, which was originally said to release on YouTube in 2019. As in a tweet, The Alchemist claimed that they released a whole album under a secret name that has never been found, launching a scavenger hunt for this lost album. Although it's never actually been found, and it's kind of unclear if it even really exists at all, or if this is just some sort of prank or something. Secret Society This was a pretty interesting debut album that was going to be released called Secret Society by a hip-hop supergroup of the same name in 2008, with the songs being themed around conspiracy theories, the Illuminati, aliens, and the like. And while the album has actually been completed, it has never been released. Buddy Bolden's Band Recordings here we have some very old lost recordings from the Buddy Bolden band, who were very popular in the early 1900s in New Orleans. And he and his band are said to have played a key role in developing the early history of jazz. However, despite this, there are no surviving recordings of his work. And unfortunately, since it was just so long ago, these recordings of this influential early band are most likely gone for good. Humongous Recorded sometime in the late 90s, this was a lost game show pilot that was made in Orlando, Florida, that was a fantasy game show that took place in a world of lost toys. But besides that, not much is known, and there isn't even any photo or video evidence of the pilot that's been located. 
Police Surgeon. So this refers to a rather obscure Canadian drama from the 70s called Dr. Simon Locke, which is also known as Police Surgeon, which was about a doctor who at first lives in a small town, but eventually moves to a city where he helps out the police department. And a post on the Lost Media Reddit describes some lost episodes from the show, which actually did air, but are now lost. One of these, called The Wanderer, was actually found, but another one called Maroon, about the characters getting stuck on an avalanche, as well as the episode called Gunpoint, about two brothers who rob a bank, are both lost. Ninja Gaiden 2 and Ninja Gaiden Black Source Codes So this one is pretty simple, yet kinda sad, as the original source codes for Ninja Gaiden Black and Ninja Gaiden 2 have been lost, with the team working on remaster projects saying it was even unable to be salvaged. Silent Hill 2 and Silent Hill 3 Source Codes we have a very similar incident here with Konami losing the source codes for Silent Hill 2 and 3, which is definitely a bummer for Silent Hill fans, and a big reason why the HD collection ports look so bad, at least according to Konami. But don't worry, Silent Hill 2 is getting a complete remake, so fans at least have that to look forward to. Silent Hills now this is one of the saddest gaming related cases of all time, one of the most anticipated horror games of all time as well, the full game based on the PT demo, Silent Hills, which was unfortunately cancelled when Hideo Kojima was fired from Konami, despite the demo PT being such a huge hit for PlayStation in August of 2014, and it really just leaves us all wondering what this full game could have really been like, seeing how PT still today is seen as a classic piece of horror gaming. And that was literally just a demo, so all we really have today is, of course, that demo and recreations of it, as well as a few teaser trailers, but no builds of anything beyond PT have ever been leaked. Telltale Games Stranger Things Now, I've never seen Stranger Things. I know, I know, it's a Netflix show that basically everyone but me has seen and loved, but for those who have, you might be surprised and saddened to find out that there was a Telltale game being developed in 2018 based on the hit series, with the gameplay being very similar to the other episodic Telltale titles. However, in September of 2018, Telltale actually laid off most of their staff and basically cancelled all of their ongoing projects, including this one. However, some gameplay footage has actually been leaked, as well as some concept art and music. 1931 Epsom Derby The 1931 Epsom Derby was a racing event that was actually televised on June 3rd of that year, and is notable for not only being the first ever televised horse race, but also the first ever televised sporting event ever. So needless to say, this broadcast is a piece of history, or it would be had it not been lost. There is some newsreel footage of the event, but the actual television broadcast is most likely lost for good like a lot of the other events recorded way back in those days. Noah's Ark Here we have another very old movie from 1928, about the Bible story of Noah's Ark. And this was actually an early talkie film, as they were called, aka it actually had sound. This movie is most notable though for an infamous flood scene in which three actors actually drowned while filming, and even a young John Wayne who was an extra in that scene almost died as well. It originally premiered with a 135 minute version, including an extended flood sequence. However, due to complaints about that scene in particular and some other parts of the film, the movie was cut down for subsequent releases to only 100 minutes meaning this original cut, including the 35 minutes with the longer flood scene, is lost. Bubsy 3D Sega Saturn Port This is a port of the infamous PlayStation platformer from 1996 that is said to be one of the worst platformers ever made, and it was planned to get a Sega Saturn release that same year called Just Bubsy 3, However, it was delayed till spring of 1997, and eventually was cancelled with no prototypes or builds or anything ever leaking online. So all we really have are some ads about the title. Diablo 64 
This is one of many but never finished or released titles for the Nintendo 64 disk drive, which is a whole nother rabbit hole so I won't get too deep into that here. Just know, this version of Diablo that was planned to release for the 64DD was most likely just a port of the original PC Diablo, and that's really all we have there. Doom Episode 5 Apparently for the original Doom, there was planned to be a fifth episode which included bonus stages that was never released, and was actually a part of a build of the original Doom that has since not been discovered. Kingdom Hearts Vcast Kingdom Hearts Vcast is a mobile game released in 2004 in Japan and 2005 in America, and is an unofficial and non-canon entry in the Kingdom Hearts franchise. However, the Verizon Vcast network was disbanded in 2012, making the game unavailable for download after it was shut down. But the first chapter of the game was actually found in 2016, with the third chapter eventually being located in 2018, and a fourth chapter being found in 2022. But the game in its entirety has still not been fully found. Luigi's Mansion Space World Demo when Luigi's Mansion was first shown off at Space World 2000 as a tech demo for the GameCube, there were a couple of differences that big fans will probably notice between this version and the one shown in the E3 trailer, as well as compared to the final release. But also, the footage from this demo was available on a site called GamerWeb before that site was eventually closed down in 2003. However, on November 24th, 2021, the lost footage was actually uploaded to YouTube, where it can still be viewed today. Bad Bunny Unpublished Songs Bad Bunny is a Puerto Rican rap artist and singer who, like many other artists, has some unpublished and unreleased works, and some of these you can actually find in compilations on YouTube or on SoundCloud. Halix's Album this is an 80s rock band actually created by the Walt Disney Company that was inspired by how huge Star Wars was at the time and played frequently at Disneyland and other places around LA and California. And as the entry suggests, there was a planned album in the works for the band. However, it was never released as the band was dropped by their record label, so it's unclear for now if it was ever even finished or if it was just never released. Music for Supermarkets This is a partially lost album created by a French musician who I don't even want to try to pronounce the name of, and was created for an art exhibition on supermarkets of all things. And after this exhibition, there was an auction held for the album. The only copy in fact, with the master tapes literally being burned in front of the attendants for all to see. However, even after all this, the album is actually available, albeit in low quality because it was broadcast on a radio station for a brief period. However, the location of the original album remains unknown. Thespis Opera Score This is an opera from 1871 composed by the duo W.S. Gilbert and Arthur Sullivan, who had a total of 63 performances over the year before it was disbanded. And most of the music from this is lost, with only two songs having sheet music available. But none of the performances were recorded. I mean, it was the 1800s. But interestingly, there was also a short story written by Isaac Asimov about the opera. In fact, about time travel also called Fair Exchange, where a man travels back in time to actually witness the opera live. All the Money in the World Kevin Spacey Version so this is a more recent piece of lost media, that being an original version of the film All the Money in the World from 2017 that was recorded with Kevin Spacey in a lead role, which was filmed prior to the sexual misconduct allegations, or at least before they became a big thing in the media. And of course, after this story broke, the director, Ridley Scott, made the decision to reshoot the scenes with Kevin Spacey's character, and instead use actor Christopher Plummer. A few of the initial trailers include some of Spacey's scenes, but the version with him in it has not surfaced, and most likely never will. A Took Footage There is a rather infamous screenplay called A Took, which is based on a book titled The Incomparable A Took, written in 1963. 
This is because of an urban legend that claims all the actors who were interested in the lead role would die due to some sort of curse, as this happened with the actors Sam Kinison, John Candy, Chris Farley, and John Belushi, with some saying it even extended to others who were simply involved in the production, such as with Phil Hartman or Michael O'Donoghue. However, despite the film adaptation never coming to fruition, it seems that some do believe that there is some footage that was recorded, although if that is the case, it has never seen the light of day. Crazy Frog Movie The original character created for a short animation and later used as a ringtone mascot was to receive his own movie in late 2008. But that's not all. There were also a bunch of one minute shorts that were planned to be released on the internet, 52 of these in fact, for promotion of the main film. However, there isn't much else in the way of info, screenshots, or anything like that, as the project was cancelled sometime in 2007. Cyberworld 3D This one here is pretty interesting because rather than just an unfinished or cancelled project, this film was actually released as a 3D animated anthology film in theaters in 2000 for IMAX, grossing over 16 million and being considered a box office success at the time. The film itself consists of 8 different short films, which include a variety of well-known animated characters, such as Homer from The Simpsons and The Princess from Ants. However, despite the first seven being readily available, the seventh film is only partially found, while the last one is completely lost as of now. Switchfoot Unreleased Songs Once again we have the lost and unreleased songs of a music group, the American rock band from California called Switchfoot, which has been active since 1996. And on Switchfoot's official website, there was actually a vault section which at one point listed over 150 unreleased songs, but the page now no longer exists. First Legitimate 3DS SD Card Hack So I guess this was a kind of obscure screamer video that was created by an unknown user on YouTube back in 2012. That was of someone using the 3DS camera application before cutting to an abrupt Jeff the Killer jump scare. Yeah, not much else to this. Mandar Productions Videos So this is another pretty simple one as far as I'm aware. This is still an active YouTube channel related to LEGO collecting and reviews and such. And apparently this channel does have some lost and deleted content, as most do, especially for a channel that's been around for quite some time, although I'm not sure of any specific videos or pieces of content that are lost. Although apparently there was some controversy with this guy, so maybe that has something to do with it, I don't really know. Power Rot Power Rangers We've got more Polish stuff here, courtesy of Equal Rep, and I gotta say, this stuff is getting pretty obscure, because this is a short comedy sketch created by a YouTuber called TappyRec86, who does other movie parodies, but this one, as of now, is currently unavailable. Rob Ford Using Substances Rob Ford was the former mayor of Toronto, Canada from 2010 to 2014. So you might be surprised to hear that there is actually a video of him using some pretty illicit substances. Uh, crack. Yeah. And this video isn't actually lost media, it's available right now on YouTube, but I definitely won't show it here. Frady Cat Here we have yet another cancelled Disney animated feature. One that was being developed since at least 2004, when a story reel presentation was done in May of that year, with the film being a parody of the noir genre, and was planned for a release in 2009. However, the project wasn't greenlit by Disney as they felt the film didn't cater to a children's audience. And of course, since then it has never been picked back up, so we really don't know how far into development it actually got, but we do have some concept art from the film. Firelight. Here we have one of the earliest films from Steven Spielberg, way back in 1964 when he was only 17. With the film being written by Spielberg himself, and being made with only a budget of about $500, which was screened only one time. 
The film is about some scientists who see some weird lights in the sky, which are actually aliens that start to abduct humans and animals and such. And some of the footage from the film has been made available online, but the rest of it remains lost due to two of the master reels being sent to a production company that never returned them. Falling Kind of an interesting film here, because it's known as the first ever R-rated Mormon movie, which released for a short run in theaters in 2008. Following that, there were a couple of other additional one-off screenings, but after that it was never seen again, due to never receiving any home media release of any kind. And this film is about an LDS couple, one of whom is a screenwriter and the other an actress, who solely have to make compromises in their beliefs in order to become successful in filmmaking. Interestingly, if you've seen the film Nightcrawler, there are quite a few similarities between the films, and a lawsuit was actually even filed by the film's director claiming that they plagiarized his work. However, the case was eventually dismissed, and as of now, only a trailer and some small clips from the film are available. Fan 4 Stick Josh Trank Cut so Fantastic Four, released in 2015, is one of the most panned and criticized superhero films that has released in recent memory, with it getting some pretty bad scores on Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes. However, some of that blame has been put on the fact that, like a lot of other films in this genre, many things had to be restricted or cut for budgetary or creative reasons. In fact, that's not all. In post-production, the director of the film, Josh Trank, was removed from the process as he was being uncooperative with the rest of the crew, and Fox without him decided to cut many scenes that were shown off in the trailers, including major dialogue and action sequences. So like the Zack Snyder cut, fans are asking for an uncut Trank version of the film, but who knows if that really will ever come to fruition. Dorothy and the Scarecrow in Oz So this film, along with The Land of Oz, are two lost sequels to the earliest version of Wizard of Oz as a film adaptation, that being the 1910 silent film The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, which is definitely not the most well-known version. Hell, I thought the one from the 30s was the first one until now, but there was even one in 1925 too, so yeah, there's that. Anyway, back to these two silent film sequels, which also allegedly released in the same year of 1910, but we really don't know too much about these, as both are likely lost for good, so not really much else to say in regards to these two films. Doraemon Robot Wars This is an unlicensed Doraemon film from 1983, created by Cuckoo's Nest Studio with the film only releasing for a limited and unsuccessful theatrical run in February. After this, there was no home media release, and the film became very obscure. And in 2022, we only have some screenshots and a few clips, but that's about it. One of the few clips uploaded came from a guy who claimed his father actually did purchase the film through a pirated DVD in the 80s in Taiwan, but he hasn't posted the rest of the film, so who really knows. Dougal Butch Hartman Version This is a kind of strange case, as the 2005 animated film The Magic Roundabout is actually a French and UK production, although it was released in the US with a different English dub as Dougal, which was almost universally panned by critics. However, apparently there was a very different version created by Butch Hartman of Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom, which included many script changes and even additional live action segments. However, most of his material was rewritten into what came out in 2006, and the Butch Hartman cut of Dougal has yet to be released to the public. Bone 2000 Script so there were a few cancelled film adaptations of the comic series Bone, but this entry refers to the one that started in 1998, the earliest of the two attempts, with pre-production slated for 2000. However, the film would never get far as production was cancelled in August of 2000, and most of the materials from this, as well as the movie script, became lost. American Dog this was the original planned version of what would become Disney's Bolt, and was going to be written and directed by Chris Sanders, with a tentative release window of 2007. 
The film was to follow a famous dog from TV named Henry, who gets lost out in the Nevada desert and has to make the long journey back home. However, the Disney executives at the time considered the project too bold and surreal for their tastes. And so, Sanders was removed from the project in 2006, and the film was reworked into Bolt, which released in 2008. And there isn't really much material at all from the initial American Dog project, except for some concept art and a bit of test footage. Banjo X Another game I remember talking about already. Anyway, this is or was to be a planned remake of Banjo-Kazooie that was being developed for the Xbox in 2005 by Rareware. Although it was planned to add a lot more elements and not just be a standard remake. However, the game was cancelled and redeveloped into Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which released in 2008. Burger King CDI Training Game this program, which is actually now found media from the 90s, was used as training material at Burger King locations and utilized full motion video on the Philips CDI. However, back in the 90s, these were pretty obscure, so it's unclear if they were really used or not and how often at actual Burger King locations. Still, there were articles written about it even back then, and a few YouTube channels did make videos on it, reviving the interest in the search. And on November 29th, 2021, a playable version of the program was uploaded to the Internet Archive. Christopher Columbus The Video Game Okay, real video game by the way, I'm not trolling you. Well, at least it was planned to be a real game. It was just simply called Christopher Columbus, or by its other title, Expo Ferens, Expo Ferens Columbus, yeah, I don't, I don't know, you got me. Anyway, apparently it was going to be a shoot 'em up that was in development by Misawa Entertainment for the Super Famicom from 1992 to 1993, with the game focusing on the journey of Columbus in 1492. It had a release date of sometime in January of 1992, before it was cancelled. And all that's left are a few ads and screenshots. And also something really interesting to point out here, there was another Christopher Columbus game made in that same time period that was an RPG for the Famicom in 1992 that is a completely separate game called Columbus Golden Dawn. The more you know, I guess. Desert Island 64 Developed by Imagineer and created for the N64 disk drive, yeah, remember that thing? This title, called Super Real Island or Desert Island 64, was a sim RPG, which revolved around you surviving on an island while creating a new civilization there with a bunch of complex game features planned around involving different types of plant life, an evolution food chain mechanic, and even more. The game was even shown off at Space World 1996, but due to financial issues with the developers, the game was unfortunately cancelled. Fire Emblem Arcanea Saga So as someone who doesn't know anything about the Fire Emblem series, this thing confuses me. But basically the Fire Emblem Arcanea Saga is a game that consists of four episodes, for the Soundlink, which was an add-on for the Super Famicom, with the episodes actually airing weekly from September 28th to October 19th, 1997. So despite there being recordings of these, the original format episodes are lost. Hatsune Miku Project Diva Demo this is a Lost Rhythm game demo that was created in collaboration between Sega and Krypton Future Media. And the demo was actually leaked before it got taken down. And this had 5 playable songs, and actually has some footage of it online. But since it was initially leaked, it has not since been up for download. Lipsha This was a planned album that was being made in collaboration between The Flaming Lips and Kesha, hence the combined names, and was set for release in 2014. However, that date came and went with no release of the album. And when Kesha was asked about it later on in an interview, she responded saying, quote, That was kind of, like, we just got together and made a bunch of songs. They still exist, I don't know where. I don't know, a lot of times I make music for me. With the Flaming Lips, we just had fun. 
They came over to my house one weekend and we made like 10 songs. It was amazing. Who knows if anybody else will ever hear it, but it was a fun experience for me. Happy Tree Friends Pre-Web Series Happy Tree Friends is a rather infamous adult web series disguised as a children's cartoon that is known for having extremely graphic content. And ever since its first debut in 1999, the show has been a pretty big success. However, before the series was greenlit, the creators made a short called Banjo Frenzy, which acted as a pilot episode. But this episode is readily available, so I'm not too sure what this is referring to, possibly some even earlier material from the creators in regards to this series. Bully R Rated so for some reason at first I thought this was going to be about the Rockstar game, but then I realized R ratings are for movies and not games, sad face. But anyways, this is actually talking about a 2011 documentary that had to be heavily edited due to profanity to get it down from an R rating to PG-13, making it more accessible in its theatrical run. Even when the film was released on home media, it was released with this edited version though, and the uncut version has never surfaced online. Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 San Diego Comic Con Trailer At San Diego Comic Con on July 23rd, 2016, there were two exclusive teasers shown of Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 both of which have since not been seen again, and are described as having some unfinished CGI work. The Mystery of the Glass Coffin The Mystery of the Glass Coffin is a very old silent short film from France that was released theatrically on March 1st, 1912, but other than that, we really know nothing about this film. There's an IMDb page and a couple of images, and that's it. Huge's Undertale Multiplay So this was a web series based on Undertale created by Huge. However, at some point into the series, it was discontinued, and all of the episodes were deleted from YouTube, leaving a lot of them lost. Although, some of them have been found. iCarly.com Videos so, iCarly.com was a promotional site for the popular Nickelodeon show, where videos could be uploaded by fans and viewed, before the website was eventually shut down in April of 2018. But as far as the other videos, there were some officially uploaded to the site, and those actually have been archived on a YouTube channel called iCarly Video Archive. And I'm not sure if this is all of them, but it definitely has a lot. The Wow Genius Lost Videos So this is the lost and deleted YouTube channel of Elliot Roger, an incel who went on a killing spree in Isla Vista, California in 2014. Being that he is a very controversial figure, it's no surprise that a lot of his online presence was taken down or deleted, and that includes his YouTube channels. Some of the lost videos with the titles known include Being Lonely in Santa Barbara Sucks, Tour of My Father's House, World of Warcraft Jokes, How to Hack a World of Warcraft Account, and Funny Racist Jokes. Wow, what a guy. Uproar.com very little information on this one, but basically it was just a website that had a lot of different web games and was mostly a lottery site, which ran from 1996 to 2006, before it was shut down. John Cena Chain Gang Revolution Again here we have another obscure entry which is strange considering it's John Cena, but you know it's a weird one when you look it up and the first thing that pops up are icebergs with this entry on it. But from the looks of it, it's some sort of lost song or album by John Cena, as it's also listed on a Lost Songs Iceberg, as well as on the Article Requests tab on the Lost Media Wiki. Lil Ugly Main Devil's Night EP Again, another Lost Song on the Lost Songs Iceberg and the Article Requests section. Basically a Lost Album or EP from Lil Ugly Main in 2011. Wangen Sensen Red City Slated for a release in 1996, this cancelled Virtual Boy title was most likely some kind of war sim, but it's still kind of unclear as there is no real gameplay of it available, 
only some red and black screenshots that don't tell us much. Although we do know that the game had 9 stages and a giant warship boss. And there's even some early Japanese reviews, so a prototype build of the game does exist. Although it has not yet been discovered. Jerk Beast on Seattle Public Television from April of 2001 to September 2002, a local show aired starring a paper mache monster called the Jerk Beast, who would take out his hatred in 30 minute episodes on members of the audience that called in. It's kind of a strange premise, but apparently after the relative success of the show, there was even a movie made years later. But as for the show, a lot of the episodes are lost which is pretty typical of public access TV. Only 8 of the 24 episodes of Season 1 are lost, while the majority of Season 2's 26 are also lost, with only 8 of those being found in their entirety. K Lumbo This is a Kmart parody of Columbo and a safety demonstration video from the 90s, with the possible full title of K Lumbo Safety Is No Accident. And the reason we know this thing exists for sure is because it was actually referenced in a court case in 2001. But other than that, the video is still lost, and we don't know much else other than that it starred a detective named K. Lumbo, who investigates the safety protocols of a Kmart. Lego Maddie Abernathy Videos more LEGO YouTuber lost media. Kind of oddly specific, but hey, I'm not judging anything here. Anyway, I believe this is simply another LEGO YouTuber with some lost and or deleted content. The Degrassi Kids Rap on Rights Here we have a video produced in collaboration between the cast of the Canadian TV series Degrassi High and UNICEF with it being produced in 1989 and distributed to schools across Canada during this time period. However, after this, the video kind of faded into obscurity, until it was eventually discovered again in November of 2022, when the video was screen recorded and posted to YouTube. Toonheads Toonheads was an animation anthology and collection of shorts created by various studios, such as Warner Brothers, Hanna-Barbera, and more, with it originally airing on Cartoon Network from 1992 to 2003, and reruns occasionally airing after that on Adult Swim and Boomerang for a couple of years. The show consisted of 89 episodes, as well as 4 specials, two of which never actually aired. And despite this being one of the longest running series in the history of Cartoon Network, many of the episodes are now lost, mostly from the first season. And some are unconfirmed to even exist at all. Hannah Montana Anime Yes, if you haven't heard about this before, this is actually a real thing. That being an anime adaptation by Toei Animation, based on the Hannah Montana live-actions children's sitcom from the 2000s, and this was all revealed by an animator from Toei Animation Philippines who worked on the project, as well as some other Dragon Ball stuff. But since that was revealed, no more information has come out about it. Obviously, the project didn't get very far before it was cancelled, but there should be at least some stills out there. But no production materials at all have been leaked as far as I'm aware. F-Zero GP Legend English Dub This 51 episode anime from the early 2000s based on the Nintendo video game franchise F-Zero was being dubbed in English by 4Kids, with the episodes beginning to air in September of 2004. However, the show was cut short at just 15 episodes airing out of the original 51, with the remaining dubbed episodes never seen, due to the show being pulled for low ratings. Queen Victoria's Diaries This concerns the personal writings and journals kept by Queen Victoria over the years, which amounted to 122 volumes of content, with her beginning to write a daily journal since the age of 13, and continuing to write until mere days before her death. However, only some of her writings were published, as the material that could upset the royal family was removed. Kirby GCN 
So prepare for a lot of Kirby stuff, starting with this one. I believe this is talking about this cancelled Kirby title, Kirby Adventure, which was announced for the GameCube at E3 2005, which was going to be similar to Kirby 64. However, that project was eventually scrapped, which unfortunately is something that happened quite frequently in this franchise. Kirby 64 Karoyan Speaking of Kirby 64, there is a lost prototype build of the game which was shown in an early interview which showed the numbers 1097 on the cartridge, indicating a date of October 1997 for this build. So this would have been a very early prototype build as the development started in September of that year. The title screen was also known to read Kirby 64 Kiroyan, probably butchering that name but yeah. Development continued on this project before eventually the team shifted gears and we got Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards. Although it's unclear if the team completely scrapped this original version or simply just built off of it. Either way, this prototype has only been referenced in this interview and the build has yet to surface online. Kid Kirby Developed by DMA Design, who would go on to become Rockstar North, we have Kid Kirby, also known as Jelly internally for some reason. Anyway, this game was about a baby Kirby, where you launch him across the stages in each level, which was going to be done using the Super Nintendo Mouse. And to be honest, I didn't even know this was a thing. However, the game was cancelled due to a variety of reasons, namely the Super Nintendo Mouse not selling well, as well as the game's development taking too long for Nintendo's liking. And as of now, no prototype builds or anything have surfaced, but there have been some pieces of concept art and sprites which show the style of the game. Katamari Damacy Online Released first in February 2010, this MMO exclusive to South Korea would only be active for about two years before it would be shut down in February 2012, making the game pretty short-lived and of course lost media. There is footage of the game as well as screenshots, but sadly with a lot of these online games, it's really hard to actually get them working if you even can at all, due to the baked in multiplayer and always online aspects. Meaning unless this game ever relaunches, well it's probably gone for good. Pilot Wings 2 So the Super FX chip is a kind of forgotten piece of Super Nintendo history being that it was only compatible with 8 out of almost 2,000 games, and yet a lot more were being developed with its usage in mind. One of those titles was the sequel to Pilot Wings, which originally released on the SNES in America in August of 1991. The sequel though doesn't have much info on it, other than that it was going to utilize the Super FX chip and only got to the very early prototyping stages before it was cancelled and any builds of this title for the SNES remain lost. Pyrocynical Lost Videos So Pyrocynical is one of the more popular YouTubers here so far on this list, and he too does have some lost media that is known about. Specifically, there are a few old commentary videos which have been deleted, some of which do have re-uploads, but there's also some even older videos that he made on Minecraft, some of which are still lost. Scare Theater Lost Videos Remember that old homunculus video? I do. I'll never forget Scare Theater. All jokes aside, that might be my favorite lost video ever. If you guys haven't seen it, it's truly a gem. And there used to be re-uploads of it on YouTube, but right now it's kind of hard to find. He's also had some other deleted or privated videos, but most of them have been re-uploaded, which makes sense considering the size of his channel. But uh, yeah, if you find that lost homunculus video, hit me up. Basically, if you haven't seen it though, in the video he debunks a homunculus creation hoax video, which was done by the guy claiming to put his, uh, his sperm into a chicken egg, which then becomes some weird creature that he destroys with a book. That's the original video. And in the Scare Theater one, he debunks it by, well, let's just say doing the experiment himself. And I think it's hilarious, no hate or anything, it's all just good fun. I love Scare Theater and his videos. I just think that's a really funny one, and I hope I can find a re-upload of it someday. The Mr. Men Show music videos. 
This refers to some music videos created for YouTube as well as the official website for a British children's show called The Mr. Men Show, which aired from 2008 to 2011. However, in 2013, the show's website was shut down and the music videos found on YouTube were also deleted. And while many of the songs were downloaded and later re-uploaded, some of the music videos attached to these songs were and still are now lost. Cars 3 Deleted Scenes So Cars 3 is obviously the third installment of the CGI animated series by Pixar, with it initially releasing in June 2017. As far as deleted scenes go, well thankfully most of them were actually included in home media releases. But there is one scene that was not included, that being a rather infamous flashback in which the character Doc Hudson suddenly collapses and dies, and it seems that this was cut due to it being just too dark and depressing of a moment, along with the fact that the actor of Doc Hudson, Paul Newman, passed away in 2008 after the first film's release. Dr. Strangelove Deleted Scenes Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, is one of my favorite all-time movies, and definitely a Kubrick classic. And when it comes to lost or deleted scenes, there's a few alternate takes that come to mind. But the big one here to talk about would be the pie fight scene, which was a drastically different alternate ending to the film. The scene had a comedic pie fight that mirrored a real battle scene between the characters in the war room, which would then get interrupted by Dr. Strangelove as he wrestles with his hand, pointing his own gun at himself, with the president and Russian ambassador then proceeding to build sandcastles out of the pie. I don't know, this is just weird. And like, I get that in theory it would work in the film given its satirical take on war, but it just sounds kind of strange. And even Kubrick himself thought it wasn't played in a very serious fashion, and had a lot of goofing around and laughing, despite it being a metaphorical take on war. And after it was cut, the scene was lost according to the film's editor, Anthony Harvey. So all we have left are a summary of the events, as well as a few frames. Outcast 10 The Hard Way 10 The Hard Way is the lost album of the hip-hop duo Outcast, which was scrapped in favor of the two working on the soundtrack for a 2006 film called Idle Wild, with the pair actually splitting up shortly afterwards, leading this album to become lost but not quite forgotten by fans. Depeche Mode and Then I Kissed Her and Then I Kissed Her is a rare song from the group Depeche Mode that was only ever performed at a tour show in England in 1980, with the song being a cover of the song Then He Kissed Me by The Crystals. And there is no recording of this song that actually exists, at least that's been found. The Copyright Liberation Front, The Black Room this is a lost and unfinished album from the KLF, otherwise known as the Copyright Liberation Front, which was an electronic duo from the late 80s and early 90s. They had a total of four studio albums, the last of which being titled The White Room, although they did plan for a sequel called The Black Room, and in dramatic fashion in one final performance, the band actually quit their careers in music and deleted all of their future projects including the master tapes of what they had for the Black Room, with the only surviving track today from the album being 3AM Eternal. Although in an interview in 2003, one of the band's members, Jimmy Cotty, stated he did actually have a copy of the Black Room, although the rest of the songs from the album have not yet surfaced, if they even still do exist at all. Gibby Give it up for round 15 for talking about this show. I'm sorry, I can never talk about this again after this. Is, is that fine? Anyway, if this is your first video of mine, I mean, welcome. But if you just somehow haven't heard me talk about this before, this was a cancelled spin-off of iCarly that focused on the character of Gibby, and a pilot episode was shot even though the show wasn't really greenlit. And while this pilot episode remains lost to this day, the script as well as quite a few images have come out over the years. Game of Thrones Pilot Okay, so this is one of my most wanted pieces of lost media ever. Big Game of Thrones fan here. But mostly I just want to see how bad this episode truly is. Why do I say that when season 1 was so good? 
Well, for one, we saw what these two were capable of doing with the later seasons, but that's neither here nor there. It's because in an interview, Benioff and Weiss stated that this episode was actually a disaster, and was not received well by anyone that watched it, which sounds crazy, because their second try at a pilot is honestly great, one of the best opening episodes for any TV show I've ever seen. But with the original, there were many issues. Many character relationships and plot points weren't explained clearly, so much so that it left many people confused, especially the relationship between Jamie and Cersei. And I mean, if you know, you know. And that's not all. There's a bunch of other differences, such as many different casting choices, including Daenerys Targaryen, and the original pilot even had a cool George R. R. Martin cameo, which I wish could have been included in the real episode. Anyway, basically to sum it all up, the original pilot was so bad that they just had to reshoot it completely, which was even surprising to Benioff and Weiss, the showrunners, that they would even be given a second chance like that in the first place. And as for if this episode will ever release, it's not very likely. However, maybe it could possibly leak someday, but you know, who really knows. The Moxie Show Los Angeles Dub Back to The Moxie Show. I think this is referring to the same Moxie show as earlier, and if that is the case, this entry is pretty interesting considering most of the show in its base state is lost. And it's also already in English, but there are some clips that are available on YouTube in what I'm pretty sure is Spanish, so maybe that's what this is talking about, but I'm not too sure. Celebrity Deathmatch Latino Dub Celebrity Deathmatch is a claymation series that acts as a parody of sports, more specifically wrestling, as it typically involves different celebrities fighting and wrestling each other in each episode. However, the show was an American production and was made in English, but this entry refers to a Latino dub of the series, which is as of now lost or possibly cancelled. It's kind of an obscure topic, so not too much info on this one. 31 Minutos Portuguese Dub This refers to a Chilean children's series that is a parody of a certain news program called 60 Minutes, and the show was aired in Latin American countries on Cartoon Network and even Boomerang. However, the show had a Chilean Spanish dub, but there was a lesser known Brazilian Portuguese dub that was only available in that country. And actually most of the episodes, or at least a lot of them, have been found and uploaded to YouTube but I'm sure at least a few are still missing. Pokemon Live Pokemon Live is a pretty obscure piece of Pokemon media. Well, to be more specific, this is actually a live-action musical that toured in America from September 2000 to early 2001, and one of these performances was actually recorded and was going to air on TV and be released for home media, although it never actually happened. But this wasn't just in the US, there were also international versions of this musical, most of which you can find on YouTube. But this specific professional recording is lost, although there are some clips which have been found, and YouTuber Chadtronic actually did a whole video deep diving into this mystery if you want to know more. Wolfman Zap Audio Clips Welcome to the real life Five Nights at Freddy's. That isn't Chuck E. Cheese, I guess. You know what I'm trying to say. Creepy animatronic mascot character. That being Wolfman Zap, the mascot of a restaurant called Zap's Bar and Grill. With this actually being more like the adult version of Chuck E. Cheese. However, the lost media comes in with the character himself, because the only evidence of his existence is from a few images. But there is no footage or audio or any further evidence of him at all. And some even think that these images could just be of a prototype that wasn't actually used in the restaurant, while some believe that there could be a show tape out there somewhere of the character. However, in 2015, there was this rather creepy image found of a rundown animatronic, which some believe could actually be the mascot Wolfman Zap, although that remains unconfirmed, and any video or audio evidence of the character still remains lost to this day. Windows Odyssey Windows Odyssey was an old build of Windows that was meant to be a successor to Windows 2000, although that project along with Windows Neptune was cancelled in favor of combining the two and retooling them into what would become Windows XP. However, any builds of these old Windows operating systems have not actually been found. 
View Sick 100 Countdown with Vib Ribbon. View Sick, also known as Music on TV or M On, is a Japanese music TV network, which in 1999 broadcast an event where they ranked the top 100 songs, where Vibri, the mascot of the Vib Ribbon games, would appear on the show. However, the actual broadcast itself has not been found, and we only have this image of the event as proof of its existence. Tsukichi Saya DVD Series So, Saya Irie is a Japanese idol who actually began her career at a very young age of only 11 as a junior idol, which is pretty weird, but that happened. And she continued in her career, eventually becoming an actress as well. And in 2008, she launched a website called tsukichisaya.com, which had a monthly membership that would provide 30 minute videos each month, which were sent in the DVD format, despite not being on actual discs. And none of this footage has ever surfaced online. All there really is is this one short trailer on YouTube. The Black and White Minstrel Show Back in the late 50s to late 70s, there aired a show on the BBC network called The Black and White Minstrel Show, which would have singers perform songs while apparently using blackface makeup. Yes, it was a racist show that aired for that long and was surprisingly actually very popular for some reason. Although of course it was definitely controversial and eventually taken off the air. And quite a few of the almost 200 episodes are actually lost or partially lost. Spongebob Adult Party Cartoon Okay, what? Really? Am, am I just going insane already? No, apparently not. Because on the Lost Media Wiki forums, there is a discussion of a Spongebob Adult Party cartoon, similar to that of the Ren and Stimpy Adult Cartoon. However, this was quickly cancelled and not much development actually occurred. At least, that's how the story goes. But I'm pretty sure this is all a hoax, as there's no real evidence to back up its existence. The Lorax Zomi Dub Again, this is another entry where when you look it up, it just shows up with this iceberg. But I think I did find it. Well, a clip of it anyway. In this very obscure YouTube video. And you might be wondering right now, like I was, what even is Zomi? Well, apparently, according to this commenter, it's an Indian language from the state of Mizoram. So, there you go. And I guess the rest of the dub is just simply lost due to how obscure it seems to be. Volador Jr. vs. Mr. Niebla Here we have a partially lost wrestling match that took place at a live show at the Arena Pueblo in Mexico for the CMLL Wrestling League on August 20th, 2012. However, apparently this fight was very brutal, and the rivalry between these two was all too personal, leading to the suspension of both wrestlers, and this bout not actually airing on TV. And as of now, only a report of the match, as well as a few images and fan recordings, are available. Daria Lost Pilots Daria is an MTV animated sitcom series that aired from March 1997 to January 2002, for a total of 65 episodes. And this entry refers to a lost pilot of the show. Well, it actually says pilots with an S. But this is the one that is most well known, called Sealed with a Kick from 1995, which was uploaded to YouTube in December 2018. X Japan Unreleased Album This is an unreleased studio album, as the entry title suggests, from the Japanese heavy metal band X. And this album is interesting because they worked on it on and off for over 10 years, from 2008 to 2018, with the album still never releasing. The songs that were revealed to be on the album were IV, Without You, Scarlet Love Song, Jade, Born To Be Free, Kiss The Sky, La Venus, and Rockstar. However, apparently there were about 13 or 14 tracks planned for this complete album. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pyramid of Light Cut Scenes So the English version of the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie Pyramid of Light is quite noticeably shorter than its Japanese counterpart losing almost 12 minutes of footage due to many scenes being cut and shortened strangely. Such as cutting scenes much quicker and getting rid of fadeouts for one thing, but also it's more than just that. In fact, a Reddit user named Invader Weasel made a whole post listing everything he noticed that was cut between versions. So yeah, it's a lot, I won't bore you here with all those details. 
Yu-Gi-Oh! Lost Cards. So shout out to Sakura Stardust because she made a whole YouTube video on lost Yu-Gi-Oh! content and came in clutch for researching this because your boy knows literally nothing about Yu-Gi-Oh! Except Blue Eyes White Dragon. I know, I know that exists and <laughs> that's about it. Anyway, in the video she details a couple of notable lost cards, such as the Millennium Thousand Eyes Virus, which apparently is said to be banned in tournaments for being such a broken card, despite it not even being confirmed to exist, which is interesting. There's also some rare and possibly lost promo cards and stuff like that, and there's even more, I'm sure. There's like tens of thousands of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, so I'm sure this rabbit hole could go even deeper. Nexus Mods Deleted Mods Ah, uh, I remember Nexus Mods. Used to download so many New Vegas and Skyrim mods back in the day that it would completely break my game. Good times. Anyway, Nexus pretty much deleted a lot of the mods that were there, mostly the older legacy stuff, and while some of the deleted ones also have been re-uploaded, some remain gone, most likely for good, so rest in peace I guess. Star Wars The Old Republic Beta Star Wars The Old Republic is an MMO role-playing game that was released on December 20th, 2011, and is still being updated and getting expansions as late as 2022. So yeah, this game was and still is a massive success, but in terms of lost media, the beta version of the game is lost, as it was only temporarily available before the full launch of the game. So yeah, unlikely this is ever going to be recovered. Avatar Legends of the Arena so here we have another MMO, this one from the Nickelodeon animated series Avatar The Last Airbender, which released in September of 2008, with some claiming there were also even some physical releases. Regardless, the game let you create your own character and even fight against other players. However, the game was shut down in 2013, leaving the game lost. But there was a major breakthrough, because in March of 2020, the game was actually completely rebuilt, although only the single player is available. Still, it's quite an achievement. Bill Cosby 77 Yeah, a lot of overlap with the cancelled media iceberg. But this was, if you're unaware, an unreleased Netflix original starring Bill Cosby from 2014, which was actually filmed on Cosby's 77th birthday. However, no footage from the special has ever been found, and that's because, of course, Netflix cancelled the special and severed all ties with Cosby, after the allegations against him were beginning to mount. So yeah, very unlikely this will ever see the light of day. Lock up your daughters. Here we have a film that's so lost, we don't even know if it ever really existed in the first place. Let me explain. It's said to be a lost vampire and horror film starring Bela Lugosi, which released limitedly in 1959. Not much is known on the plot, but a review from someone who claimed to see the film stated it was about Lugosi playing a doctor vampire guy who conducts experiments on women in order to bring back his wife from the dead. The film was also said to be pretty short, being only about 50 minutes long or so. Besides that, there's a couple of mentions here and there, and there's this alleged poster of the movie, but that's it. Invader Zim Enter the Florpus Deleted Scenes So the Invader Zim film Enter the Florpus, released in 2019 on Netflix, had a few deleted scenes. Specifically, we know about some scenes centering around the character of Tak, who is likely to have originally played a bigger role in the film, including a scene in which she escapes from a prison. But besides that, not much else is known, and the scenes have not resurfaced in any way, and were most likely cut due to time constraints. Star Fox for Virtual Boy Everyone knows about the Virtual Boy, Nintendo's worst console ever, a complete commercial flop, and honestly one of the worst gaming consoles ever made, but that's common knowledge. It was discontinued not long after it came out in 1996, so it's no surprise there's some unreleased, unfinished, and lost games. One of these is a Star Fox project for the console, however this one is so obscure that it's unconfirmed if it really truly existed or not. The only real proof of this is from an early tech demo from the Virtual Boy, which showed off a Star Fox-like vehicle, but that's about it, and there's no other info or images on this alleged title. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Christian Whitehead version 
Basically, the story behind this is a fan in the Sonic community called The Tax Man, also known as Christian Whitehead, was hired by Sega to make ports of the older Sonic games for iOS. And he did this successfully with Sonic 1 and 2. However, problems arose when they attempted to port the third game in the franchise, as there were some legal issues with the game's composer. And so the port was actually cancelled. However, there is actually footage of Christian playing a build of the game on YouTube. And Sonic the Hedgehog 3 did re-release, however, with a new remaster in Sonic Origins in 2022. But the original version is still lost. My Pokemon Ranch. This here is pretty interesting. So possibly one of the most obscure games in the Pokemon series has to be My Pokemon Ranch, which is a Wii title released in 2008 that allowed users to transfer Pokemon from Diamond and Pearl or Platinum to be stored on a farm, where you can trade, store, and organize your Pokemon. However, the Wii shop closed on January 31st, 2019, and the game can no longer be purchased. All Dogs Go to Heaven VHS Commercials This 1989 film had a huge marketing campaign for its VHS release the following year. $13 million spent on it, in fact, including newly done animation by Don Bluth's studio. One of the known ads was all the characters in the film getting a gift for each other, which was the VHS tape. And the other one was actually for a downy detergent, which also had dogs discussing the film. And this one was actually found in a compilation of commercials uploaded to YouTube from November 14th, 1990. So it just seems that the first one is missing as of now. Banana. So this is a kind of vague name for a piece of lost media, but this could be referring to a partially lost Chilean children's show from 2004, which was made to compete with 31 Minutos, another lost show. Similarly, this show was also some kind of newscast parody, hosted this time by chimpanzees. And some footage of the show can actually be found on YouTube as of now. MakeMeKing.com so this is a now defunct website which basically just consisted of people posting dares for members to actually do and would be uploaded as videos. However, only a few of these obscure videos can be found on YouTube today, and with the site gone now, most of if not all material including the dares and additional videos are lost. Swallows and Sparrows so this is a lost Soviet comedy film from the early 90s that was set in a Georgian town, but that's about all we got. Keep in mind though, this is also being translated from a Russian wiki to English, so yeah. However, someone from the Lost Media wiki is also apparently searching for this film, and even sent a letter to a film company that said the digitization of the film was planned for 2021. But, uh, yeah, it's 2023 now, and no movie has come out as far as I'm aware. But this is pretty obscure, so who knows. The History of Alejandro Magno So, with this one, I'm not too sure. But I believe this could possibly be referring to the histories of Alexander the Great, also known as Alejandro Magno, sometimes in Spanish. Which is a very old biography written about the life of Alexander the Great. However, apparently some of this work, published in the early 40s AD, is lost. Mi familia es un dibujo animado last episode. Also known as My Family is a Drawing, this was an Argentine soap opera that released in 1996 and used traditional 2D animation alongside live action. And for a while after its initial release, this show remained kind of obscure and rare. But in 2013, a YouTube user called Telefi uploaded all of the episodes of the series to YouTube. Well, almost all of them. All except for the final episode, which still today remains lost media. Pasa Palabra Gonzalo Hernandez episode. So this refers to a specific episode of the TV show Pasa Palabra which is a game show in which contestants compete and try to win points, and is adapted from the British game show The Alphabet Game. Anyway, this specific Lost episode featured a man named Gonzalo Hernandez, who was arrested for some very disturbing crimes related to minors. Let's just leave it at that. And it appears that this episode never aired due to the studio finding out about this after the episode was already recorded. WCW Spanish Commentary 
A lot of Spanish lost media here. This entry refers to World Championship Wrestling, which is an American professional wrestling company founded in the 80s, but eventually became defunct in the early 2000s. Now, the lost media comes in in relation to Spanish commentary over certain matches. It doesn't refer to which, maybe all of them. It's kind of unclear here. Gotch vs. Hackenschmidt Alright, some more wrestling lost media for you. This time a very, very old match from 1911, which was apparently one of the biggest and most anticipated for the time. That being the rematch between Frank Gotch and George Hackenschmidt. And the match was even filmed and was highly publicized, with it making rounds to various theaters around the country for some time. But today, the whereabouts of the film reels are unknown, and all we have are a couple stills from the match. Shrek Royal Riot. So here's a pretty weird and obscure one. A lost and unfinished Shrek fighting game that was being developed by MGA Games that would use motion controls similar to that of the Wii, but according to an article by one of the developers, actually used Super Nintendo level hardware to run the game. And this is basically the only info on it. Sure there are a few screenshots, but no footage and no builds of the game. Beck, we like folk, who cares, destroy us. So this is a lost demo tape from the American rock musician and songwriter Beck, who released over 14 albums in his career. Apparently though, according to this post on the Beck subreddit, only one copy of the demo tape was ever sold, and it has never been posted online, despite there being a possible list of the tracks available. Ninja Sex Party, Wanna Be Starting Something Wanna Be Startin' Something is actually a song originally performed by Michael Jackson. However, the music duo Ninja Sex Party actually did do a cover of the song. But in the wake of allegations against Michael Jackson, they decided to not release the cover. X-Men vs. Street Fighter Sega Genesis Port X-Men vs. Street Fighter is a crossover fighting game developed by Capcom in 1996 for arcades, but was later released for the Sega Saturn in 1997 and the PlayStation in 1998. However, apparently there was a bootleg Sega Genesis port, at least I think that's what this is referring to, as some users of the Sega 16 forums do reference it, as well as a Super Nintendo bootleg. These could have also possibly been hoaxes, as they have not been found to my knowledge. I really like you. This is a lost and unreleased campaign video from the 2015 UK election made for Nick Clegg that was replicating the style of the music video to the song I Really Like You, also released in 2015. There's even some behind the scenes footage of filming, but that's all there really is, as they never went through with releasing it. Apparently though, after he filmed the music video, he immediately regretted it and decided that he would not show it to the world, even allegedly saying, why the f did I do that, which is pretty funny. So yeah, the official video has never been made public and likely won't ever be, at least for some time. Calchuchesta videos. So back to Anthony Fantano again. This is referring to a character played by him in some of his videos, who is supposed to be like his roommate or something, and he even dropped his own parody album called The New Calassic in 2015. Apparently though, there are some missing uploads involving this character, which I guess isn't a surprise considering Fantano himself does have some deleted and lost videos, but yeah. Impractical Jokers Cut Content Okay, so Impractical Jokers is one of my favorite shows of all time, and definitely the best reality show out there. Been watching since the beginning, and it has just gotten even funnier over the years. It really is a shame with Joe leaving and all, but hey, we still got 8 classic seasons of the show to look back on. And for a show that's been going for over a decade now with over 200 plus episodes, there is bound to be some cut and deleted content, whether that be for time reasons or because of stuff just going wrong on set. And some of the Jokers have detailed some of these moments on podcasts and in interviews of the stuff that had to be cut, such as with Murr who after a prank in a store was assaulted by a man with his phone. Also, obviously some scenes have to be censored, sometimes heavily in order for it to still fit the TV network guidelines, although some of the episodes are more heavily edited than others when it comes to this. Also, after Joe left the show, True TV and HBO Max have gone on to remove entire scenes involving Joe in compromising situations. 
Come Town first episode. Come Town is a parody podcast that ran starting in May of 2016 and only recently ending in June of 2022, with over 300 episodes. And despite it being a very popular podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, apparently the first episode of it is actually lost. Robot Wars Extreme Series 1 and 3 The British television game show Robot Wars is basically just what it sounds like. A competition between fighting robots, which aired from 1998 to 2004, and from 2016 to 2018 for the main series. However, there were some special episodes that were premiered as Robot Wars Extreme, and were segmented into series, starting with the first one in October 2001. And Series 1 had an episode with a robot referred to as Anthrax. Which is unfortunate because around that time, there were some cases and real attacks using Anthrax targeting various politicians and media figures. And so this episode was re-edited to avoid using that word. The third series is also still available, although maybe like the re-edit in Series 1, there were some alterations made for later versions. And there's even more lost and found media related to this series, but that's a whole other rabbit hole. Ramuald the Reindeer So with this one I'm not too sure, because this is a 1996 children's animated series that aired on BBC for only one season of 13 10 minute episodes. However, the show only had one home media release, which included for some reason only 5 of the 13 episodes according to this article, with an additional episode also being recorded and posted to YouTube leaving the remaining seven episodes lost. The Incredible Shrinking Character Planned for a release in 1996 for PC, Sega Saturn, and PlayStation, and developed by the team responsible for I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, yeah remember that game? Well, this was going to be an action-adventure game based on the novel and movie of The Shrinking Man, where the player would have to shrink and maneuver around the level. A playable test demo was even leaked of the title, but it was never released, and for one reason or another was cancelled. Astro Boy Test Pitch Animation So this doesn't really say what Astro Boy adaptation or version this is referring to, but I did find that some were searching for the test footage for the Astro Boy movie from 2009, which does actually have some of it found on YouTube in the portfolio of a certain animator who worked on the film. Balinese Slapping Fish Airing originally on Nickelodeon Australia in 1998, this was a short series of animations about two fish that would slap each other. And this is another case of lost media actually being found, then kind of lost again, as they were uploaded to YouTube in 2015, but later privated leaving one of the shorts still missing, until it was uploaded to the Internet Archive in November of 2022. Cook's Night Out Another very early series here from the BBC, which was a five-part cooking show that aired from January to March of 1947, featuring a French chef preparing different dishes and recipes. And yeah, like a lot of the other early broadcasts, this is also lost. Star and the Forces of Evil So like many other cartoons, Star vs. the Forces of Evil has an unaired pilot pitch, which was created in 2011 and was actually called Star and the Forces of Evil. However, the pilot was significantly reworked after Disney saw the original, and a few aspects of the series were changed. There isn't much specifically known about this original pilot, except for a few certain shots which were found, and of course the name change we talked about earlier. Whatever Happened to Robot Jones This was an animated series from Cartoon Network that ran from 2002 to 2003 for only two seasons, and is notable for being reminiscent of the 1980s style of animation using traditional cell animation. In the first season, the original version had a real robot text-to-speech voice for the character of Robot Jones, although the executives didn't like this and got a real voice actor for him in the second season. They also redubbed the first season, with that version being the definitive one that they would re-air, leaving the original dub lost. The main lost aspect though are the three episodes that were in production before the series was cancelled, the materials of which we don't have, although we do know about two of the episodes. 
One of them was about the history of robotics, and the other was a parody of talk shows, but that's about all we've got. Balloon Trip Nintendo DS Tech Demo Here's a tech demo for a Nintendo DS game that was shown off at E3 2004, which actually was inspired by Yoshi's Island and Balloon Fight, an old NES game. And despite this original tech demo never resurfacing, the concept of this game was later reused for the DS game Yoshi Touch and Go. Carving for Nintendo DS Tech Demo this is another tech demo for the DS, a kind of interesting but weird game that was shown off at E3 2004 once again, where players could carve out certain materials and make stuff out of them, but it hasn't been seen since it was first shown off. Socks the Cat Rocks the Hill for Sega Genesis Here we have another unreleased game from the 90s, a 1993 platformer developed for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis called Socks the Cat Rocks the Hill with the main character of Sox actually being based on the real-life cat of Bill Clinton, with the gameplay featuring foreign rat enemies invading the White House, and even bosses based on real-life political figures and other politicians, such as Jimmy Carter. However, the game was never released due to its sudden cancellation, which some believed could have been because of the political content, but really it was because of the game's publisher shutting down before the game could come out and actually the SNES version was found, despite only one prototype cartridge existing, which after lots of reselling and kickstarters and stuff, was eventually released in pre-production cartridges in 2018. However, no builds from the Genesis version have been found. Alright guys, and that's it for this tier finally. I mean, this was a crazy long video, and we are not even halfway done with this iceberg yet. Still, this had some really interesting entries, probably the most interesting of all the parts so far. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, don't worry this series is not dead. I know it took a while to get this one out, but it's going to take a bit longer as these tiers get bigger and more expansive. But I've got a bunch of other videos planned and already in the works. We've got a little bit of a different video coming really soon in a couple days or so, focusing on one specific piece of obscure media that I thought was really interesting. And I haven't given up on the Breaking Bad video either, that's definitely coming, I just don't know when. As for the rest of the content, well I guess I'll just keep that a secret for now. Oh and thanks so much for 70k subs, we're getting that much closer to 100k which is crazy, and I really just have to thank you guys so much. It really does motivate me to try and make better and even longer videos. But that's enough rambling from me, I love you guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all with the next one. Peace out.